This is the Real Christian Manliness Podcast with Isaac and Tim Ingram. Let's get manly. Hello, everybody. This is Isaac and Tim Ingram with the Real Christian Manliness Podcast, as was stated in the introduction, because we like to be redundant, and I think I've said that exact same intro before, so it's like a redundant redundancy, so... Uh, I've got Tim here on the other line. How you go? How's it going? Redundantception. <laughs> I am doing well. And also, as well. you can tell by the other laugh on the line, we have a guest today. His name is Mr. Seth Weil. Now, Seth, you may not know this, but for the longest time, Anna and I used to say your name Wheel because we had never heard you say it. Really. And so nobody does that. No, nobody <laughs> says my name wrong. Oh man! And so it wasn't until that first time that we visited you guys uh, in Bryce Canyon that we're like, "Oh, we've been saying this wrong the whole time." <laughs> so anyhow, we got uh, Seth on with us. Like I said before, now Seth is a a new friend, but a pretty good friend, I would say. That we, my wife and I, met. Uh, a few years back. Well, my wife, Anna, met you first in Moldova before... It might have been... No, I think it was That's after... That's correct, yeah. It was I after that. I met Anna. But, yeah, him and his wife, Cassie, they were over yeah. in Moldova doing music for a big you know, citywide uh, evangelization, a big outreach. And so uh, that's how Anna met them. And so through Anna... I connected with them, and we ended up going on a little bit of a road trip to uh, up to Montana, but we took a pit stop in Bryce Canyon when they're at. So, Seth, why don't you just go ahead and share with us a little bit about what you do there in Bryce and in Panguitch in southern Utah. Wow. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's start off with, <laughs> first of all, being a pastor of Valley Christian Fellowship. And from there, let's see, this, that'll be nine years I've been pastoring that work here in, in Panguitch, Utah. Uh, coming up next week, it'll be nine years. So anyhow, I've been doing that. And then also to supplement that, I'm bivocational. I'm a musician and we have a cowboy dinner show. It's a chuck wagon type show up at Ebenezer's Barn, B-A-R-N, <laughs> Barn and Grill, <laughs> in Bryce Canyon. And uh, we've been doing that for nine years as well. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, and uh, a lot of fun. I tell you what, if you're ever in Bryce Canyon, you definitely need to go visit this show. Um, and if you're there on a Sunday, just drive over to Panguitch and go to their church too. So the, their show is like, like one of our favorite things to go see um we, every time we're, we're we're there we go and uh we go see that show because it's just world class music in our opinion um you can ask my wife their cd is in our car and it goes over and over again most of the time when we're on road trips so uh so tell us a little bit about <laughs> the, the band and uh, uh how you got well, listen to you there. That came together. Wow. Well, let's see. 15 years ago. Can you believe that? 15 years. Life goes by really fast, doesn't it? <laughs> I remember when I was 15. Things go. It's amazing how fast things fly. <laughs> yeah. 15 years ago, let's see, the boss of the Bar G Wranglers saw um, my family and I, we were performing at their church, and uh, he was just forming another group. His, um, his dad used to play with Spade Cooley and... and bands back in the 50s, well, 30s through the 50s, and he was starting up a chuck wagon group, and uh, we just, um, at that point, my brother and I decided we'd um, go ahead and move out of the family band and into other things, so I went towards the Bar, bar G and been doing that for, well, the last 15 years. That's awesome. And so um, the type of music you play is, you know, things like Rawhide, um, I, you know, one of my favorite songs recently, uh, we just started... The familiar li- stuff. Yeah, some of the more familiar stuff, but then some of the, like, the real traditional stuff, like Room Full of Roses. I don't know if that's a real traditional one. I really like that one. I was listening to that one a few weeks ago, and it's like, I really like this one. Um, let me think. Orange Blossom Express <laughs> is your special. 
well, Orange, yeah, Orange Blossom the special. That's, that's got to be mine. <laughs> I, I can't get through a night without playing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just just a lot of cool stuff. Um, tell us a little bit about the 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 religious culture down there in Southern Utah. Oh, okay. The Mormonism that we have to deal with. Sure. Um, <laughs> you know, being in Utah, period. You know, you're going to have to deal um, with LDS, Latter Day Saints. But here, in particular, we are the only um, Christian with. Witness, let me put it that way, within 70 miles. So no matter where you go inside the, the county, we're currently inside. People know who we are, what we're about, and it's a great opportunity, to be honest with you. Um, through this church, because of that, because we're the only other church, the Mormon wards, as they're called. There are three wards here in Panguitch, and then... Uh, uh, let's see, there's one in Hatch, two over in Tropic, one in, um, I think there's two in Escalante and one in Bryce Canyon. So anyhow, we are the only other church. Now, there is a, a Catholic church when there's a priest in the area that comes by and, and I guess fills the, the position there. <laughs> but otherwise, we are the only church, period, mm -hmm. inside of our area. So, um, you know, being that... Just preaching the word, getting the Bible out, and being able to be a witness to whatever comes by. Also, it being a, a large tourism area because of Bryce Canyon, your opportunities are endless here. And God really blesses when people just want to be used and let themselves minister uh, to. Yeah, and <clears throat> it was a little bit glitchy, but I think we got the the overall gist of everything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one one thing that was interesting to me the first time we visited there, um, and I understood after you know we talked about it was the the church isn't necess it, it doesn't say Baptist on the sign in big bold letters, and and that's for a good reason is because that you're really the only you know quote unquote Christian church over there, and so you're able to catch a lot of different people, and. Um, and I'll vouch for. We've been to your church three or four times, and it's it's a very Baptist church. It's King James Bible, you know, good good teaching and preaching. So, but you know, a lot of people, uh, yeah, a, definitely that. A lot of people, especially in the big towns, and you know, it's it's been a big deal where people start taking Baptist off their sign, but they're doing it for the wrong reason. They're doing it to to um cater unfortunately so to yes cater to certain things and so that's one thing that i learned by visiting that area and speaking with you is that uh, i think that's a good reason to take it off because you definitely cast a broader net without you know dipping the colors so to speak so uh that was a really great right. thing right and i i do have I do have on the bottom part of the sign there, it does say a Baptist church on it. So, yeah. so people do know <laughs> that uh, yeah, those are the doctrines we follow. Yeah, well, they don't know until they pull into the parking lot. They have to get close to the sign, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> they got to come in. Yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the, the fine print will get you every time. Um, so, you bet. So tell us a little bit about where you came from, where you grew up, your your family and the music with your family. Sure. I grew up in Idaho, um, a little out-of-the-way community in it's Prairie, Idaho. It's north of the mountain home up in the mountains. So uh, growing up there, we lived without electricity, running water uh, for a large portion of our life up there. There wasn't much to do, so we um, found our instruments to be the key to a lot of entertainment, and we just learned our instruments, and after got to a certain point, I don't know when that, I guess I was about 11 or 12, it would have been. We started playing in different churches, and that started going to the point where we traveled around the United States playing in different churches all over the place, and um, that was my childhood, growing up on the road, playing in churches, and dad uh, preached. He, he's an ordained minister, and his father before him was ordained. And so we would do a lot of revivals, mostly uh, rodeo Sundays all over the West, and uh, enjoyed being able to use our music for 
for Christ, but it was, um, I don't know, for me, it was just what we did. It wasn't anything unusual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty great. Now, Tim and I, we've been involved in music our entire life, and so it's just kind of, we didn't do it for a living, and we didn't travel singing particularly, but it's always been a, a part of our life, especially when you get the right quartet CD and and the tape player on the road, <laughs> and then listen to you the, bet. You then listen to dad to dad a bass singer try to sing tenors. It's just a great thing. <laughs> 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 Tim's just grinning sure. over there, especially in Romanian. Oh, or Hungarian, or or you know just. Yeah, dad, or Hungarian. Dad, dad in the car is just a, a fun thing. <laughs> <laughs> try, try I have yet to meet him, but I'm looking forward to that day. Yeah, Tim t- will know what I'm talking about. We're we're driving through Hungary, and he's just trying to read out loud all of the signs. And if we had a Hungarian, they'd probably be shaking their head in the in the car. So. Well, and so you are you are a uh, husband and a father. Tell us a little bit about your family. I am. I have four kids, a lovely wife, and our latest child was um, one that we were not necessarily expecting, but she came along, and just like today, I was looking down at her. And, you know, God chooses to bless us in ways we don't even recognize or are even aware of until he gives it to us. Yeah. And looking down in those little eyes with a cute little smile and a grin, I, our, our, um, there's eight years in between our two youngest. So uh, we were not planning on having another child. And I thought I was all done with diapers and, and early morning hours and um, all the issues that, that you now are aware of, <laughs> Isaac, with, yep. with babies. And, uh, you know, we were just living life. But like I said, God brings th- things our way that – that bless us more than we could have put together for ourselves. So yeah, I, I'm a husband and a father of four and just enjoying life. Being able to to raise a family for God is something in itself that is fulfilling. And then, Lord willing, seeing those children grow up to also have families of their own that call on the name of the Lord for their Savior and, and um, be able to have young families that are raising their families for Mm -hmm. christ and sending out more more hope for the future yeah yeah and so and you i i really appreciate the uh testimony you have with your kids because they're some of the most well-behaved kids not perfect i know but they're very well behaved (laughs) Uh, and and very creative too they are when you're here yeah (laughs) (laughs) well they are creative yes (laughs) And so, and so, yeah, and, and you're, you came to meet your wife through music. Is that correct? I did. Um, same thing. We were actually at that time, we were playing a couple of church. Wyoming, and also, um, we had a gig at the rodeo there. They have a nightly rodeo in, um, Cody, Wyoming. There's a whole 4th of July, um, I can't remember what they call it. It was, um, and they, they might still be doing it. But anyhow, there's a, a big Western weekend put around uh, 4th of July. We were up there for that. And we met Cassie's parents. Her dad was a pastor down, is a pastor down in Aravaca, Arizona. And I had met them. We did a couple of night concerts together with their family they also did some music cassie was not playing with them at the time it was just her uncle her dad and her mom they had a trio anyhow they invited us to come down to their church in aravaca and put on a rodeo sunday down there and i think they had ulterior motives they knew they had a young beautiful daughter that i was just gonna fall in love with and well it happened <laughs> <laughs> It, that's one way to arrange a marriage, I guess. So. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, completely unarranged, arranged. I think. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Um, <laughs> so, tell me, tell Timothy's me. starting to move now. I see. I see. Our internet must be working better. Hey, Timothy. <laughs> I think I'm still here. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, you're there. I actually even heard you that, that time. <laughs> he's all here, but he's not all there. Is that what it is? I don't know. You know him better than I do. <laughs> yeah, good job. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, so being a pastor and a musician, you know, bivocational, as you said, um, what what some of the sh- the strain or some of the 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 things you have to overcome in being a a, a Christian man and being an entertainer at the same time? <laughs> well, I, I suppose pride is the biggest thing for all of us in everybody's life, hmm. and so being an entertainer, sure, that could take over if you let that happen. But I was just mentioning last Sunday at church how it, it, it's a very strange position being an entertainer. You're on stage. And sometimes you, you catch yourself, you look out there, let's say like the other night we had almost 500 people out there, and you're just really enjoying your audience and you're thinking about it all. And, and then I was thinking, how many of those people actually know Jesus Christ as, as their Savior? How many people are are on their way to heaven? How many people are actually Christians? Mm-hmm. How many people even believe God or believe that Jesus Christ died for their sins? You know, you're you're in this strange position, but inside of that, I do believe that your testimony and your lifestyle can be a huge inroad to be able to, be able to not just preach the Word of God, but to, to show people that there is a different life out there. There is a different future out there, mm-hmm. and um, God is real, and His Holy Spirit does change people's lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and you know, that reminds me of... I was I was listening to this one podcast. Um, it was a business based podcast, but he had a guest on that would go into corporate America and clean up big messes with leadership who you know take liberties mm-hmm. and, and fall into moral you know situations and and ethical and financial situations. And then he started to change and transition into helping people helping people to avoid those different things. So anyway, the the point I'm making right now is that um, one of the things that he said was whenever we start to believe kind of the hype, we believe the labels that people put on us, you know, you being an entertainer, you know, all the applause and, you know, and, you know, the signature, you know, autographs and, you know, all these different things, right, you know, right. that could definitely you know, begin to tickle, tickle our masculine, you know, pride. Um, and so then you begin to of put course. yourself on a pedestal and all these things. Um, I can, I can see, I can see that even, even, and Tim can probably agree, even singing music in church, you know, you know, people come up and say, Hey, that was a blessing. Hey, you're such a great singer. Sure. And I've heard even people say, Hey, you're, you're better than this person. It's like, it's like, well, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if, I like I like you singing yes. so much better than that guy or that girl <laughs> or whatever. I'm sure, they weren't talking about me though. <laughs> <laughs> sure, you never got that one. Uh, no comment. No. <laughs> you almost you would almost sometimes in church rather people don't say anything at all. I know. It, yep. It was it, 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 it's hard to fight sometimes. Well, and 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 you know you want to have the right motive in, in singing you want to sing for the lord and you want to sing to be a blessing but whenever you right. know and and all those compliments and i'm not saying we got them every every second of every day but they would come after you know a time singing sure, sure. and you really got to be careful and just got to deflect and reflect those things you know it's like well praise the lord and you know you know god's been good to us and uh, you know yes yeah. yes and, but not really and, and, and- not really just and say get, them, but but mean them. <clears throat> Truly mean them. Yeah, you're right. And then get proverbs out, get slapped around a little bit, and then yep. <laughs> get back into it. <laughs> yeah. I, in fact, in my devotions last, let's see, it was last Monday. Yeah, this is last Monday. Uh, proverbs, what was it? Let me see if I can't find that. Proverbs 29, verse 23, a man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Mm-hmm. And I think as men, that is what we desire is to be an honorable person, to have somebody when they're speaking about us say things that that uphold us as an honorable person. They can trust us. We can be trusted. We could 
when when someone talks about us, they can believe what we're saying is going to be true. Well, mm-hmm. they're not going to believe what we're saying is going to be true if we're full of our own selves and full yeah. of pride and and lifting ourselves up constantly. So, yeah, that was a that was a very good verse for me. Yeah, and one thing you know, Tim and I, a couple two or three years ago, we put together a young men singing group, um, and our goal is to have a double quartet basically and have you know two of each. And great. And we had a bunch of young junior high and high schoolers that we would sing with and some college students too. And one of my friends told me and, and I asked him how in dealing with a couple of the kids that uh weren't the the they didn't have the best work ethic or something as far as showing up for practice and stuff like that and he said what you got to do is you, you you gotta you gotta give them encouragement, but give them the right kind of encouragement. He said, "Don't don't compliment the talent. Compliment the hard work. You know, say, hey, I appreciate yes. your work. I appreciate you showing yep. up, and because they're gonna get that positive affirmation if they have the talent. But it's important to really put the value in the work behind it and and the uh, the character behind it. And I think that was a, a good deal. And I think I think that's a positive way of kind of. <clears throat> getting around the back door of that pride, you know, because yes, talent, talent is one thing, but hard work is a whole different, whole different story. 100%. And the hard work will produce the talent eventually. Mm -hmm. That goes without saying. So, so you're exactly right. Pushing the ethics behind it is the more important thing. I I think a lot, a lot of people, uh, the end result, is what people focus on. And so young people, especially, they just want to have the product. They don't want to take whatever it takes to make that product happen. Mm -hmm. And so they don't take the time, the effort, the investment inside of everything else that eventually produces something good. Yep. Yeah. And, and you're, you're exactly right. And whenever the focus is on the end product, then that's whenever, you begin to cheat and take these shortcuts and, you know, do the quick fixes and, and all that good stuff. Use voice boxes. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> auto tune. Yes. <laughs> I, that, I haven't gotten the pastor to allow the auto tune yet. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Timothy. <laughs> I, I was thinking, it's like, that'd be a weird sound for bar G to have a little auto tune in there on, I don't know. I don't know which song that would fit, but <laughs> probably none of them. <laughs> well, see right about this time of year, it'd be awful nice to have that after five and a half months of singing your voice out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, and that's another thing is that um, it, the people that don't know the Bargy, they sing there at Ebenezer's. W- when did you start this season, Seth? April twenty first. There you go. April twenty first. And and when when will you end your season? You got it. It will be. Let's see. This year. Let me look at my October twenty first. So twenty first and twenty first. April twenty first to October twenty first. And is that seven days a week for the most part? That's seven days a week. That's correct. Yeah. Schedule, but. It's all, it's all good. Yep. And so, and, <laughs> and I know this from being down there and visiting with them is one of the frustrating things is that you've got, you know, a whole lot of natural beauty in that area and you'd like to go out and go camp and go do all these things. But every night you got to be <laughs> oh, back man, at Ebenezer's. Yes. <laughs> yes, that is. And the older my kids get, the, the more I, I do feel that because Coulter wants to go camping and, you know, he wants to have dad along with him. So I will have to figure how to make that all work because that's extremely important. Yeah. And, you know, their, their, their area, Southern Utah, is one of, one of my favorite places to visit. Not only to meet up with them, but Bryce Canyon is a spectacular place to visit. Uh, Zion National Park is, is just awesome. It, we went on a hike uh, back in April, I think it was right before you started up your season, and it is it was just right, so yeah. great. It was so awesome. It we, is. We still need to get up Angel's Landing, though, or at least I do. <laughs> I don't know. If... We will. We will. 
We just need to do it in the winter when there there's not so much heat. Or, or tourists. <laughs> but there's always tourists. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, well, I think that was a pretty good, pretty good conversation. I think we covered a lot of good topics. I think people got to meet you and, and, and I'm not really joking. I'm not saying that just because he's on the line. You need to go down there and, and, and see Bryce Canyon and see and hear the bargy. Um, the food's okay, but the music is, is excellent. Um, so they need to go down there. Are you talking to Canadians or? <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Just, well, yeah, you're. Uh, he would be coming right? uh, up here, but yeah. you need to go he's northwest. He's in Montana, from Texas. so he is above me. Okay. <laughs> you need to go over there. So you need Tim, to go, you got to go up. to there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, over. Yeah, it is kind of over, isn't it? You know, you know, Tim. <clears> you know how our sister wants to get the family together. I think we should meet up in in Utah one. You know, one summer. I can do summer. Winter, no such thing. <laughs> Tim's, Tim's not a fan of it winter. Was, it was 82 here yesterday, and I thought I was going to die. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the mid-80s here. It, here, it's the, the problem's not the heat. It's just the smoke. It's ridiculous. Are you getting that smoke from BC? Yeah, there's there's a bunch. And there's a lot of... There's some fires over in, uh, like, Lolo Pass and... And okay. a few closer mm. and bit of roots. Yeah, it's it's kind of selfish, but I'm I'm just upset because I can't see the mountains. That's all. <laughs> That's not selfish. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> when I was sick, mom would always put me out so I could see the mountains. It does help. Yeah. Well, thanks, Seth, for coming on the show. Uh, it's it's been a great show, I think, and and. We look forward to coming down and seeing you again sometime soon, hopefully. Do you do you think you got enough of bark on station <laughs> to have everything? Between editing and and filling in the blanks, I think we'll we'll, we'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If we have to go another hour and a half, that's all right. <laughs> all right. Uh. Well, well, thanks, everyone, for listening. Um, we'll see you next time. I'm sorry. That glitched out one more time there. <laughs> Wonderful technology. <laughs> just, just te- well, Something about encounters. We're, we're not in New Mexico. We're in Utah. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, I'm sorry. You're going <laughs> to have to say it one more time. The, the, don't worry, the power of editing will we'll figure this out. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Real Christian Manliness Podcast. We hope you enjoyed our show. Now, if you could do us a favor, go over to iTunes and leave us a five-star rating. That way, other people can find us easily in the rankings. And if for some reason you don't think we deserve five stars, give us whatever you think we deserve. But please explain why we got that rating in a review. Now, make sure you subscribe and have a great day.